Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa and this is Lisa Makes. So today is a traditional knitting podcast. I have one FO to show you, several new cast on whips, well, a few, and, uh, and lots of plans for spring. So if that sounds good to you, please grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever beverage strikes your fancy and your knitting and let's chat. Okay, so I have a huge list in front of me here in my notebook to make sure I don't forget anything because it has been a busy time and I don't want to forget to show you all that I have going on. I'm like surrounded by my knits. I'm downstairs in our place this time because upstairs is a bit noisy and outside they're doing some work. And so I thought, let's just cocoon in this little space and chat knitting. Okay, so today I want to show you my FO and this is probably my last winter make, I would say. This is sweater number 18 from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I told you last time that I hadn't made a garment by My Favorite Things Knitwear before, and I was wrong. I did make camisole number two, I'll put in a picture, and that will come up in a future video where I show you all of my spring summer tops or my spring summer makes. Um, but I did remember after the fact that, oh yes, I have done that one. But this is the first pullover, the first winter garment. And uh, I made this from reclaimed yarn. So if you've been watching my channel lately, you may know that I've been really getting into taking secondhand clothing that may end up, you know, at the end of its life cycle and instead take it and use it for the yarn. And I always think that it's better to reuse if possible, but of course I love buying beautiful yarn and supporting beautiful yarn producers. But I love the idea of taking something that is secondhand that may not have um, any use and take it and use it for something else. So that's my, my philosophy on that. Um, so this was a little bit of a dated style. I mean, you might want to call it a classic style, but but maybe a little bit of a dated style. It had the shawl collar with like the toggles and the faux leather. And um, I took that and it was a wool, 90% wool, 10% cashmere blend. And I turned it into back into yarn. And if you look up close here, you can tell that it is a like a tweedy yarn. So it's got a tweed to it, which is kind of fun. Although I will say that the tweed obscures the, the texture a little bit. Now I'll put in some pictures of me wearing it so you can see, I, I might have a video as well. Um, I do love this sweater. I think I'm a little bit of a uh, end of winter malaise in terms of falling in love with my knits. However, I've worn this a ton already. Because of the cashmere, it's nice and soft. I will say that knitting it like I'd love to knit this pattern again or something like it. They have another version that's similar in a very soft wool because I did find with the tweed, I found it a little bit grating all the pearl rows um, and even the knitting. It was a little bit more rustic than I expected considering the cashmere content. That said, wearing it is very soft and I have it up against my neck and I feel nothing at all, but there's something, or maybe it was the tweedy bumps I don't know, but I did at some point go, I'm really done with this. <laughs> I'm really done with this sweater. Um, enjoyable knit though, very trendy, right? This sort of knit pearl, um, you know, sections and creating texture with just knits and pearl. So I did really enjoy that. I followed the line by line instructions rather than the chart, although both exist. Um, I also, when I did the sleeves, you, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but they're, well, no, you can tell. Yes. If I do this, you can tell they are not exactly the same. I did one and then I started the other and I was doing it at work or something like on the fly. And somehow I looked at the wrong page and I did a whole chunk wrong. And then I ripped that whole chunk back and I started again and I did it wrong again at one point. You can see I've got some ends here still to weave in. And uh, I kind of just went close enough, <laughs> found, found, figured out where I was and finished off. Um, this sleeve is also slightly shorter than the left one. I'm not sure why, um, but it is slightly shorter. Now, the other thing, modification, the only modification that I did on purpose <laughs> was this neckline is supposed to be a double folded neckband. And I wasn't sure because of the reclaim status 
uh, I didn't have my exact meterage and so I wasn't sure if I would have enough. Now I do have a ball like this. I think I want to say it was like eight grams or nine grams. I've weighed it. Um, so I could go back and oh the other reason why I, I cast this off early is because I wasn't sure because I picked up fewer stitches probably like seven or eight fewer stitches for the neckline than what was called for and I wasn't sure if that was going to be an issue but once I cast it off and tried it on I was like actually this is great and I don't really feel the need to go back and add the double folded neckband I would almost rather maybe add a tiny bit more length to the sleeves although do you know how sometimes does this happen to you where you finish a sleeve and then somehow over the next six months, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And you're like, it was long enough. And why is it shorter? I don't know exactly why that happens, but I do have a pet peeve of short of sleeves that are too short because I get cold wrists. <laughs> and so I hate it when things are too short and I'm always pulling them down. So I have a feeling I'm going to hold on to that little ball that I have left over to add maybe a couple more rows of well either a couple more rows of ribbing or cut in and do a couple more rows of stockinette I would probably rather have longer ribbing uh, but we'll see now I used my chow goose for the main body and then for the sleeves I used my denim knit pro um, short circulars that I've shown you before they are a re very reasonably priced set of short circulars it, that go from I think it's like three and a half to six and a half or something like that. I'll put on the screen what it is. Um, I find them really, really practical and they weren't too expensive. I think you can get them for, I think I got mine on sale, but I wanna say they're 50 or 60, which while not inexpensive is a lot less than uh, a lot of the other sets of minis. And they are, of, they are wood, they have a, a lacquer. That's the word I'm looking for, a lacquer. Um, so they're very, very smooth. Anyway, I, I've recommended those before. I'll try and find a, a, a link for them. If I, so I was corresponding with someone who was trying to find them in the States and they couldn't find them and they had to order them from Europe. So just be aware you might have to order them from Europe if you want to grab them. Okay, so that's my only FO, but I do have a couple of new cast-ons that are getting close to FO status. So let me start off with those. So if you remember, I had this yarn from Knit Crate. This is Knit Crate yarn that I got with my points that I had, my loyalty points that I had. And this is called Audine Wool's Bloom in the color Nasturtium. 80% alpaca, 10% silk, 10% camel. It's beautiful, it is beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that I had three, I thought I had three, um, skeins of this left and then just yesterday I found this fourth skein so now I'm kind of on, 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 on a, the fence a little bit but let me show you what I've done so this is called the I wrote it down good job I wrote it down where did I write it down the cognac sweater by Atelier Castin this is knit on six millimeter needles I started off with a size two and then I ended up going to the size three. Now it's looking a little bit bright in, like if I hold it back, like that's more the color, um, but you can see the richness in the color. It's because of the yak, it's got like brown flecks in there. There's light and dark, it's a very rich color. And I was gonna do the version with the, I'm talking the past tense already, um, <laughs> with the uh, I-cord bind off. And I've already done the I-cord bind off here down at the hem. And I have this much left of the third ball. So I picked this because I thought I only had three balls and I thought I can do a spring version with maybe uh, not short sleeve really, but like say elbow length sleeves. And this is what I had left going into the two sleeves. And I thought, perfect, I'm gonna divide this in half and I'm just gonna see how long. And then I found this yesterday. And so now I have two choices. I could make these both full long sleeve and I could go back in and add some length to the hem because it is a little bit shorter than I thought. But I'm tempted 
to frog the whole thing and make a cardigan because I've worn my cardigan. I'll put in a picture of my uh, Nomi cardigan. I've worn that so much. I've worn it so much. And now I feel like maybe I need more cardigans. And the, I just love this so much. And I can't decide if doing such a simple sweater will highlight the yarn or if it won't do justice to the yarn. I don't know. I do really love the, is this, a, is this a contiguous? No, because there's, it's a set in, I think it's just a plain set in sleeve. I do really like the set in sleeve. I'm a little less on raglans lately. I don't know why. Um, so I do really like the sleeve. It has very nice details. It's going to be beautiful as just a clean sweater, but part of me wants to frog it and turn it into a cardi. My eldest was like, mom, stop frogging things. <laughs> she just wants me to finish it as is. And it is really far away done. And I do have lots of other yarn that I could make cardigans with in the fall. So maybe that is the smartest thing, but, and I also thought maybe I could try my hand at a little bit of embroidery. Have you done embroidery on your knitting? If so, link me up to any photos or tell me what you did or link me up to photos of pretty, um, pretty embroidery on the knits. Cause maybe that's what it is. Maybe I just like embroider a little, some little flowers here just to give it a little embellishment, but beautiful to knit six millimeter needle. So it goes really fast. And yeah, that's my kind of my last, it's sort of a spring winter, spring kind of project. Then if you saw, would it be my last video? Yes. My last video where I talked about again, frogging spring, and summer sweaters. Now, first of all, let me just show you, just so you know that I'm not frogging everything. I have this, look how cool this is, of my spring and summer yarns that I wanna use. Um, actually, it's pretty much all of them, although there's some duplicates that I don't have in here. This is actually a bra drawer organizer. So you're supposed to like, if you imagine like a bra in each one, I don't have that many bras. <laughs> Uh, and I just found it took up so much space in my drawer that I took it out and I was almost going to chuck it or like, like donate it or whatever. And then I thought, look how great this, this is. So you can see I've got, these are all the yarns I'm going to talk about a little later. And down here at the bottom, these are the ones that I've frogged. So this one I'm using right now. These are some of the extras. This was a cardigan from a company called Uterque or a line called Uterque. And Uterque is like the top line of Zara from the Zara company or Thara, as they say here. So you have Zara and you have, and there's some below too, I'm not sure, but above you have Massimo Dutti, which you know I use a lot. That's what this was, was Massimo Dutti. And then above that is a company or a line called Uterque, which is kind of their designer line. And I found this cardigan and I'll put in a picture of me wearing it. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's cute. It's just not something I wear. I don't wear oversized cardies like that. And I especially don't wear them if they don't even cover my forearms. Cause remember cold wrists. <laughs> so it's not useful to me. Um, so I saw though that it was 55% silk, 45% cotton. And I thought that is a combo you do not see very often. So I frogged it. You can go back to the other video to see me, the whole process of me taking it apart and frogging it, etc. Um, and so this is what we have. So, and I have, like I said, I have, I have this one and I have another one this size and then I have another one bigger. That's what I have left. And I, and this is already number three that I've used. What am I making? I'm making this. This is the moss dress from Sandis Garn. I bought this booklet last fall, I believe when I was buying, or maybe, yeah, I think it was last fall when I was just buying a bunch of Sandiscar and pattern books. So um, this is, like I said, the moss dress and it's made for tin lina. So it's made for a worsted weight and this is fingering weight. And you can see, hopefully, that this is four strands together. Let's see if that'll show. It's one, two, three, four strands together. If I get it really close, you might be able to see. Um, but it's definitely altogether fingering weight. And so I had to do a little math and I'll be honest, knitting math, not 
any math, <laughs> but especially knitting math. Not so much my forte, but what I did was I knit a swatch on needles that I figured were about where I wanted it to be on for a fingering weight. So I'm, I did it on three and a half millimeter needles. I found my gauge, which I don't remember off the top of my head, and I took the gauge that was written in the pattern and I realized that I had approximately 30% more stitches because the, the, um, the yarn is thinner, therefore you get more stitches in 10 centimeters, right? I had 30% more stitches than what the gauge is. So what I did was I took my size that I would normally make, which was a size small, and I added 30% to that starting number of stitches, which put me in between the extra large and extra, extra large size. I decided to go with the extra large to size down a little bit. And I've been following the numbers for extra large, except for length, because it will say, you know, do, 15 centimeters well i'm still the, like the length is the length it doesn't matter how many rows you have to do it's you know that that number is fixed so i use the small medium size for the length but i use the extra large size for anything to do with stitch counts okay now let me show you what i have and it might not make a lot of sense but bear with me you can see that we knit this inside out and we do that so that we don't have to purl, purl, purl. Cause if you can notice if this, this is all lots of pearls and then, uh, and then lengthened or stretched knit stitches. And we do that by purling into the second loop in purling into the second stitch every other row. So one row is normal. And then the second row you purl, into the second stitch and that's what's re what creates that elongated knit stitch on the wrong side i hope i'm making sense anyway we start off by casting on at the top and uh increasing until we get our length that we want from sort of mid chest right because we're going to add straps at the end and then we do the same thing for the back and then we connect them and then we start knitting, knitting, knitting in the round forever, forever. Let me turn it around so you can see what it looks like. So I know everyone's going to say, don't you soak your reclaimed yarn before you knit with it? No, I don't because it doesn't bother me to knit with it. Let me just show you really quickly. If I am holding this to knit with, I'm just going to hold it up here. If I'm holding this to knit with, look, it's, it's, it's flat as I'm knitting with it. Like I'm not noticing any kind of difference as I'm knitting with it. And then when I let go, sure, at that point, it's gonna be a little bit bumpy. I have steamed this yesterday. I've steamed it a couple times. I would rather steam the object as I go rather than skein up the yarn, steam it or soak it, wait for it to dry, blah, blah, blah. No, that's, I don't want, I just don't want to. Bless your heart if you do. I'm uh, power to you, but for me, I would rather, as long as it doesn't affect my knitting experience, um, I just do it. I did, I did um, wash, did I wash and dry this one or did I just steam it? I find it with Vinted because it's coming from someone else's home, it's different than buying something from a thrift store. Because when you buy something from a thrift store, you know, lots of hands have been touching it and, and uh, it's it sometimes smells musty and whatever. But when something's coming from someone's home, I generally, I find, I would say about half more, well, about half the time I don't wash it. I just give it a really good steam to make sure if there were any, you know, pests or anything like that. And then the other half of the time I will wash it on my wool cycle and then leave it to dry. Just depends on the thing. Okay. So I've turned this inside out. So now you can see what it's going to look like. There's a couple of ends to weave in and I'm sure when I soak it, it will even get more flat, but... Yeah, there we go. So right now we're at, well, we're already out of frame. Isn't that great? And it will probably stretch down too. We are uh, basically at my high hip. We're at my high hip and I have the rest of this ball and three more balls. So I am not going to get a maxi dress out of this, nor did I really want a maxi dress, to be totally honest. I would love it if I got to either just above or just below the knee. That is a more 
not flattering, um, practical length for me um, in the summer, right? Because this is a silk cotton blend. It should be pretty fresh, pretty, pretty, you know, cool to wear. But uh, I don't know that I would want it full length, but we'll see. I'm just going to, I'm honestly just going to keep knitting. I feel like I've done pretty well. You essentially are knit, 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 and then do the, this elongated purl because you're on the other side. And then every once in a while you do increases by adding another knit stitch into the middle of the pattern. Um, and I think I have two more increase rows before that happens. Now I've been working on this since, Ooh, I wonder, hang on, let me look on my, on my Ravelry to remember exactly how long I've been working on this. Glasses, middle age. Uh, March 15th, I started it. And today is the 28th. There we go. So basically I've been working on it less than two weeks and it's about halfway done. I would guess it's about halfway done, maybe a little less than half, so shall we say. My goal is to finish this by May 1st because on May 1st, I turn 50. I'm entering the 50s. So, uh, and I'm, I'm not upset about it. I'm, I'm a little bit like, holy crap, I'm turning 50 freaking 50. Wow. Like, where does the time go? However, I'm not like having a crisis bed or anything like that, but I thought that would be a nice goal. Not even that I want this to be necessarily my dress for my, I'm not having a party. I'm having like a little, you know, drinks thing. <laughs> um, but I just decided that would be a good goal to try and get it done. So it doesn't linger, right? I don't want it to linger, linger. Anyway, that is my dress. One of the things I really wanted to do this year was dresses and dresses will figure into my plans as well. You shall see. Uh, in terms of other whips. So I have two whips from last summer that need to come back out. One of them is the cardigan called the corn cardigan by Rebecca Klo. That is for Audrey and I didn't finish it last year. I kind of got off on the pattern and then got discouraged. So I need to go back and finish that. Uh, and then I also have this, which is the Sailor Swift top by Victoria Lindbergh. And um, if you'll remember, I had bound this off and then discovered it was too short. And so I've taken this gold sock yarn that came to me from Inga of Knitting Traditions when she gave me, um, when we were part of an exchange for a, uh, advent calendar and I think this might be Zakami yarns I think so now this is going to have gold edging so it's going to have a gold hem and it's going to have a gold neckline and whatever this is almost done so if you watched my video on all of my hand knit sweaters which um you might want to go back and watch if you haven't because I try on all of my sweaters and I tell you exactly what I think of every pattern every yarn that's been a very popular one. And I asked if people would like to see all my hand knit summer tops. And that was a yes. So I'm going to do that. But I thought, let's finish this up first. First of all, it's not quite warm enough yet. It's It's been kind of warm, cool, warm, cool. But you like I'm very comfortable in a sweater. So I haven't pulled out all my summer knits yet. But I thought, let's put this, get this done. And then I also will put in a picture of the Mazé sweater that I had done. And then I realized I had dropped a stitch and had to undo a bunch of things anyway. I have like a cuff to do. So I want to finish that as well before I finish that video so that I have something to show all of all of my summer or spring summer tops. Okay, so that's all the knitting for the moment. Now let's talk plans, 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 plans. Okay, I want to be practical with my plans. I want to make things that I know I will wear. Um, and I want to use things that I already have. So let's go, should we go buy yarn or buy, buy, let's go buy yarn. I did buy some cotton cashmere from Katya. And you might remember that I made the Juno top from Vert Knits in cotton cashmere last year and it's lovely 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 to wear and these were on sale for three euros a piece at my local in Villanova it's called Filgut and um, I had to pick them up so so I picked up two of each color and 
why did I pick a two of each color and not four in the same color? I don't know. I think I probably could have done that, but anyway, it's fine. Uh, I have a couple of ideas. So there's one called At the Seaside Tea, and that is a free pattern. It's going to come up in my free patterns video. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe because I'm coming out with a free sewing patterns video. Sorry. <laughs> that too. But next, a free knitting patterns video, uh, all spring knits. And I have some good ones that I'm pretty sure you guys haven't seen. So please do subscribe so you can see that. Hit the little notification bell. So the At the Seaside top is, uh, I don't remember who it's by, so I'll put that down there. That I could definitely do. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of out of a raglan mood. So I do own the, um, oh, again, by Rebecca Klo. It's very popular that something put that down. I have it, but I'm just not in an, I'm not in a raglan mood right now. And then I also bought the Tombow tee by Florence Miller. That's a possibility. It's got a very high neck. Um, it's a possibility, but I think I want a V neck right now. So what I like about the, at the seaside one is it has the V neck. I can do the stripes. Uh, but it does not have a raglan. It has a really interesting kind of, I don't know what the name of the construction is. If you know, let me know below. So there's that. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Now, the other possibility for the Tombow tee is I have from Knitting for Olive... One time I was doing an order from Las Tijeras Magicas, and I had to add a little bit in order to get free shipping because I would rather pay and get yarn than pay for shipping. So I bought two of the gray. I think it's moose, dusty moose, dusty moose. And then I have some left over from my failed uh, this year's um, uh, Stephen West mystery knit along. I have some thoughts on that. I'll t let's do a really quick aside. I did it two years ago, uh, this one, two, three. So if I say three years ago, and I loved it. And and then last year I got busy, got off track, didn't do it. And then this year I got through the first two sections and then stopped. My thoughts are, I love watching it. Like I want to make popcorn. It's like, it's like watching a really good Netflix show, watching <laughs> really like, I'm like, Ooh, what's going to happen next? And look at the beautiful combinations. And Oh, he's so funny. You know what I mean? Like I literally think of it like, like watching a, a Netflix show. Um, but I don't wear my my shawl at all. I wore it the first year. I haven't worn it since. And I wonder if ultimately it's not actually something that I want to do. I find I found this past year I did not wear, I did not make very many accessories. I have accessories, but I just I wear them. Like I wear my hats. I wear my cowls. I don't know that I need more. Whereas you could say, do you need more sweaters? But I love my sweaters and I wear my different sweaters and my kids wear my sweaters. I don't know, like I just like wearing sweaters more. So all that to say, I was making mine out of knitting for olive merino and now I maybe have some free. So I might do this combo, which I thought would be really cute. Um, or I don't know, I might use it for something else, but though that's what I was kind of thinking of. Anyway, it's a beautiful combo. I have a couple more colors because I had four colors. The gray wasn't part of it, so I had four colors. So I could do something. I also don't want to just do stripes because I want to do stripes. No, I don't want to do stripes just because I have to use up yarn. Like there is a place for that and I do want to do that. But I don't want to do that necessarily for my spring summer knitting just because I want to make stuff that I for sure, for sure I'm going to wear. And I don't know if I would wear it if it was like four different colors of pink with gray. I almost want to streamline a little bit. I could do another Sailor Swift tee. I have an idea. So there is a tank top pattern. Where are you? Where are you? There it is. Okay. So the basic backless top is by Victoria Kuntoman. And it's available in English and in Hungarian, which is cool. My background's Hungarian. My grandpa was from Hungary. And it's just a very simple, uh, well, a backless top with a high neck. Now, if you've been watching me for a long time, you know that I don't like to get sun on my chest. Um, so like little tank tops, sometimes I wear them less in the, in the heat of summer because I hate feeling that like 
I don't know, I, like, I don't, I just don't like getting sound on my chest. So, <laughs> so I like those kind of halter tops where you're covering up here. And I wanted to maybe do something where I do double knitting to be able to cover, sorry, I'm gonna start again. I want to somehow try to create a built-in bra. I do this a lot in sewing, as you know, and uh, I, I like the idea of trying to figure out how to do it with knitting. If you've ever done that before or you know of a pattern that adds a built-in bra to uh, a tank top or something like that, let me know. But what I was thinking I might try to do, as this is a very simple top, is to use double knitting because I don't need support as much as I just want an extra barrier. So I thought if I could create a second layer of fabric using double knitting, maybe that would do it. And then maybe at the end, I could add elastic just to the bottom and then cast off. Anyway, I don't know if that'll work. It's just an idea I had, but if you know anyone who's done that or have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Wouldn't it be cool to do this and then, then have the double knitting on the back in, in a color? not necessarily this color. So same thing with this. I mean, the cotton cashmere, the cotton cashmere is slightly heavier. It's, it's a sport. It's slightly heavier than this, but, but similar, you know, anyway. So that was something else I was thinking of doing on a completely different track. There is a pattern I found that I'm kind of obsessed with. It's called the Chouquette slipover from Rui Yamamuro. Uh, I don't know if it's too late in the season to do this, but, and I don't even think I have the yarn. <laughs> Maybe I do. I must have something that would work. I just think this is adorable. I love the shape of it. I think it's totally adorable. So I don't know. That's on my list as well, but I don't know if that's going to be now or later. Okay. And then what else? What else? Okay. Something that is for more summer and I don't know yet what to do with it, but I can't remember if I showed it to you. I went to La 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 Lu in Barcelona La, end of last summer, and I bought two uh, balls of Isaya Trio, which is a, if I believe it's a linen, yeah, linen cotton lyocell blend. And then I also got this hand dyed Brett silk from Soc Una Troca, which means uh, I'm a skein in Catalan. Um, and I thought these two together would be beautiful, you know, for some sort of tank this is 500 meters so something that could do 500 meters but wouldn't that be pretty held to held together don't know what yet if you have any thoughts let me know but i just had it left over and i thought and then the last thing i have is black uh black knitting for olive pure silk i love this yarn i made the sailor swift top in this yarn I could wear it all summer. It did stretch out a little bit, which I didn't love, but other than that, I really, really love it. I bought four or five of these balls to do a dress, the Melita's dress from Vertnet. I don't know that I still wanna do that. I kind of wonder if I wanna do something a little more practical and just do a t-shirt, like a black t-shirt that I could wear. Again, it could be the Tombow. It could be, what is that one by Rebecca? Now I have to find the t -t Tosta, t Tosta, Tolsta, <laughs> Tolsta, the Tolsta tea. I, it could be that. Um, I looked at the Cumulus blouse, which I'm, or Cumulus tea, which I'm always tempted to get. And I just kind of want to use things that I already have. I'm t I just don't really want to buy more patterns, but I might end up buying that. The other thing that I have that I have not made yet that I own is the Sporty Tank from Jacqueline Seaslack. Now I got this um, at, for free because I tested for her. I tested the the vest, the Strata vest, and she's very generous with her testers giving patterns. And so um, I still have another one that I can choose, but this is the sporty tank and it came with the shrug that goes over top. And basically it's just, not just, it is a, a ribbed tank top. Super cute. I could do that in this, although I was thinking of doing it in this, which is Balam Bamboo. This is a Catalonian brand. I love this color. It's looking a little brighter on camera. It's actually like a, more like a olive green, like a darker olive green. And this, glasses please, thank you. 
This is 65% bamboo, 25% cotton, 10% linen, 105 meters. I have three of these, three of these and easy to get more. I thought that might be nice for a tank. Also something that I'd love to have a built-in bra for, but, but that might not, that might not be, um, that might not be possible, but we'll see what happens. And then the very, very last thing is I had one more cardigan that I frogged. I'll show you the cardigan. Very oversized, tons and tons and tons of yarn. This looks a little bit similar to this one, but it's cream and the other one is gray. This one is three ply, not four ply, and it is cotton cashmere. It is, I believe, a 90-10, or it might be 75-25. I can't remember. Again, I have like 500 grams of this. This would be light fingering. I debated doing a cardigan, like there's a Lana Grossa cardigan number nine that's free that I could do, or there's the Little Love cardigan by Anka Strick. I do like a cardigan in the evening when I go out in the summer with uh, longer, like longish sleeves, or at least kind of here sleeves. Um, but I have a few ready to wear ones, and I just wonder, is that the best use of my knitting time? Am I going to enjoy it the most? The other thing I could do is hold this double and knit something at, it would probably be either a sport or a DK weight. Um, but I don't know yet. I don't know. I have a few more dresses that I want to do. I have, but that's more like summer knitting and I need to kind of keep going with what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so Francesca from An Italian Knitter came to a conference here in Spain and she was actually staying not too far from me. She actually came to my town, but didn't realize I lived there. So I didn't get to see her then, but I met up with her at one town over the day she was leaving. And we spent about, I don't know, like two, two hours or so together. We had coffee. We went to Filgut, which is the, the local store that I love. She actually got some of this Balam Bamboo that you can see over on her channel. And uh, we just had such a lovely time together. And I brought her some yarn and she brought me some yarn. So she brought me this lovely bag from Ferrara. Ferrara. And she brought me a skein of dark omen yarn. There's dark hair on it. I'm sorry. Dark omen yarn. Look how rich and gorgeous that is. This is the same yarn that I knit my Rivendell sweater out of, just in a different color. So I know that I love this yarn. And this may be an excuse for me to grab a couple more or maybe do like a, a, a colorwork sweater next fall, maybe in like a cream with this as the accent color. Anyway, beautiful. Thank you so much, Francesca. It was beautiful. I'm so happy. And then the last thing is, I'm gonna leave you with a little montage. We went to Girona. Girona is a hundred, uh, city of 100,000. It's a medieval city. There are Roman ramparts there, I believe. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It reminded us of a mixture of like Florence and Stockholm and St. Petersburg and I don't know like think of all of those towns that have bridges and, and a river and, and and medieval beautiful things it kind of reminded us of that so this is the first time we've ever been and it, there was actually some drama off the top but I won't go into that but we did in the end have a really nice time had some really good food and we will actually go back to Girona, but I did find this little shop. And so I'm gonna show you that shop. I didn't buy anything there because it's all Casa Sol, which is a, almost all Casa Sol, which is a Catalonian brand that I already can access very easily. And I didn't wanna shop at that point, but a uh, beautiful, beautiful store. And if you are ever in Girona, I highly recommend you going. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that montage. Uh, but other than that, that is all for today. I am coming back very soon with a set of free knitting patterns for spring. And what I wanted to ask you guys is, would you like to have knitting pattern videos, free, free knitting pattern videos that are divided into sections? For instance, would you like me to do knitting, knitted dresses, sorry, free knitted dresses patterns for spring? Or would you like me to do tank tops or, you know, um, uh, accessories like do you want that divided up or would you prefer it all together so let me know below you can either just say all together or separate if you don't want to you know go on and on you can do that and uh, and i will take that to heart and figure out the best way to share these patterns because i have a bundle on my ravelry page as well as on my pinterest page of all stuff that i'd love to share with you guys
Okay guys, that is all for me. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are knitting or sewing or doing whatever makes your crafty heart happy and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.